I've had the opportunity to be able to test out some of the best robot vacuums in the world. I've gone hands-on with about 30 in my lifetime, so I have a solid idea of what makes a great robot vacuum. Even so, I've become a little bit cynical about the possibility there could be a bot that's doing anything new or revolutionary. So when Narwhal reached out to ask me to review its Narwhal Freo robot vacuum and mop, I was up for the task in part because it has three enticing promises. It claims to sense dirt and adjust to clean properly. It can identify floor types to clean those correctly. And it uses a special cleanser to get floors cleaner than with water alone, which is what every other floor bot is limited to. But spoiler alert, this bot's got some issues. Stick with me to find out what they are. Hey, it's Erin here from Tech Gadgets Canada and Tech Gadgets International. And in this review, I'll take a look at how well the Narwhal Freo cleans, how these special features work, and if I think I can recommend this bot for you. An early heads up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful, to please hit that like button and consider becoming a subscriber. Both those things help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. Let's dive right in with what you get here. The Narwhal Freo is a smart, Wi-Fi connected, app controlled floor cleaning robot. It is a big piece of technology, but it is streamlined and I'm giving Narwhal major points for its sleek and attractive design. Freo has two rounded triangle microfiber pads that it uses for mopping, plus two side brushes and a main roller brush in the middle. The dock has an LCD display, and I've not seen this on other robot floor cleaners. It's a nice way to get your robot moving or to get a status update without having to fish for your phone. Under the lid here is the mopping water, a large four liter dirty water tank on the left and a clean water tank on the right, which is adjacent to a special bottle of cleanser, which you will need to install. The floor cleaner is the innovation here. This small bottle is placed upside down inside the base station to trickle into the robot. So you're washing your floors, not with just water, but with nicely scented cleaning solution. Worth noting early on here, there is no auto emptying of the dustbin. You'll need to tip it out into the garbage after each outing. Most robot vacuums only clean with water since chemicals can damage their guts. So I'm really excited to see if this bot and its cleanser can do a more thorough job. Getting this robot floor cleaner set up was actually extremely easy. Turn it on and follow the instructions on the touch screen to connect it to your home's Wi-Fi network. You'll also want to download and sign into or sign up for the Narwhal app. While you can control the robot using buttons on the bot itself or using the touch screen on the base station, the easiest way to get hands-free remote control and to enable scheduling and additional features is to use the app. You can adjust the level of suction for the vacuuming, adjust the mopping water flow or schedule your cleaning automatically. Narwhal says the Freo has dirt sensing technology that it uses in two ways. On the Freo's dock, the dirt sense will detect how dirty the mopping pads are and then customize a mix of water and Narwhal's cleanser to wash them. I can confirm that the mopping pads were always clean and never got stinky. On the robot itself, the dirt sense technology supposedly senses how dirty your floor is and it can repeat cleaning patterns until it's satisfied that an area is clean. With combination vacuum mops, it's essential the robot be able to determine which of those two functions it needs to engage. I suppose it's hard to read the Narwhal Freo's mind and prove it's actually seeing my floors correctly and knows whether to vacuum carpet or mop floors, but I can say it definitely lifted its mopping pads off of carpet and rugs effectively and it didn't seem to use too much or too little water when it was mopping. But can it see dirt react appropriately and clean precisely as you need it to? I'm gonna run some cleaning tests to find out. I put all my robot vacuums and mops through the same series of tests. I let them clean anywhere from a few days to a couple of weeks on their own. Then I'll spill things and see how well it cleans up those dedicated messes. I'll pour rice, oatmeal, cracker crumbs on both carpet and hardwood floors to see how well it can pick up the debris. Then for mopping robots, I'll splash things like coffee or red wine on the floor, let some of them dry and see how well the mop is able to scrub off stains. As a quick aside here, I was extremely impressed with how quietly this bot operates. When it's running, even on high power, it makes almost no noise at all. Does that translate to inferior cleaning power? Let's find out. 
When cleaning hardwood and tile, one of the first things I noticed is that the robot's corner brushes sometimes spin quite slowly. This is actually a good thing. If those corner brushes spin too fast, they simply scatter debris to a different area, kind of like playing dirt tennis. The bot was okay at picking up debris on floors, though it wasn't 100% in my testing. When it came to the mopping, the Narwhal Freya was also a bit intermittent. It had decent scrubbing power, but it wasn't detailed or deliberate enough to get every spill on every outing. Some days it did well, others not as well. If there is a dirt sensing technology in here, it is not obvious to me that it's actually working. The mop uses a good amount of water, and on days it was scheduled to mop the kitchen, it was noticeable that it's been through, but at the same time, it doesn't leave my floors overly wet or streaky. In short, it was okay at running its pads over the tile floor for a light wipe, but not as good with larger or dried on spills. But once I started testing the narwhal on carpet, that is where it really started to fall down. On carpets in particular, this bot was extremely ineffective. In some of my dedicated tests, using both regular and high power, it left behind about 70 to 90% of a spill, both when it came to finer cornmeal and bigger oats. It just didn't seem to have the suction power it needed. Right here you can see the bot spends a lot of time hovering over this area of dirt, but once it's finished... I also tried running it on more normal household dirt, but even on the rug by our front door it wouldn't pick up basic dirt or even small dry leaves. In many cases it simply rolled right over dirt without picking anything up at all. Now, so poor was this robot vacuum's performance that I actually reached out to Narwhal to ask if something might be very wrong with it, and I sent them the videos that you just saw to ask what's up with the lack of suction. I learned Narwhal intends for this robot to be used for daily cleaning, and the company actually notes that some of my test spills might be a bit much for bots to get through and perhaps not typical of how most owners would use them. Narwhal says the suction will easily be affected by the furry hair of the carpet and that it may have no good performance for cleaning food debris or too much debris. Narwhal says the Freo has 3,000 pascals of suction, which should be a lot, but in my testing, I don't think it was able to deliver on that. So here's my take. The Frail is not a skilled vacuum if you have anything more than light dirt in your house. Busier homes with kids or pets may find this bot just can't keep up. Now, one final word on my testing. I've run this same testing regimen with many robot vacuums and mops, and while some do perform better than others, Narwhal has the distinction now of scoring the lowest I've ever recorded on vacuum prowess. I was so surprised by the poor cleaning performance of this robot, I actually brought it over to a different house to test it in a whole new environment. The other home has no carpet, so right off the bat I think that gave this bot an advantage. In this space, the extremely light vacuuming and mopping was enough to keep things tidy in the house, so I think what this tells me is that this robot is pretty much only good for homes with hard floors and light dirt. Now, it did okay in the space, again, it didn't get all the dirt, and it also got caught on absolutely everything from cords and <sighs> cables how does that even happen? To rugs and bath mats. I'd say at least four or five times per cleaning trip, it would get caught on something, lose its mopping pads, or simply shut down. On this topic, one of the things you want in a robot vacuum or mop is obstacle avoidance, since if it's constantly getting stuck on things, it won't complete its cleaning tasks. Freo seemed to me to get stuck on obstacles more than any other robot floor cleaner I have ever used, and it's not good at all at avoiding any kind of obstacles. Multiple times during each and every clean, this robot would get stuck. That's frustrating since it means I always needed to be present during a clean. If I'd leave it on its own, I'd most often come back to it being stopped, caught, or stalled out and needing to be fixed, righted, and then restarted. 
Now the way around this is to just pick up after yourself before the bot cleans, but with so many newer and even some older bot vacs out there that have basic and effective object recognition, this seems like a problem that should already have been solved. Let's talk about some of the other features in here. While not new technology, the Freo's mops are both cleaned and dried inside the dock here. The Ecovacs Dbot X1 Omni and Yeedy Mop Station also do this too. The full cleaning and drying cycle runs long at about four hours, but it's not noisy at all. I can definitely say the mopping pads stayed quite clean and stink free during my testing period. Overall, this robot vacuum and mop really seems like it should have it all. It's got a great look and there's lots of innovative features, but in truth, it doesn't hold up to other bots and it would really only be appropriate for a home with all hard floors. On the plus side, you're getting both a vacuum and a mop in one, though the vacuuming is extremely inferior compared against other bots I've tested. I like the fact that it uses floor cleaning solution instead of just plain water. It's super convenient that it not only washes, but also dries your mopping pads and the battery seems to charge quickly. Final good thing about this bot is that it seems quite effective at lifting its mops off of pile carpets and rugs. On the downside, there's no automatic emptying of the dustbin. And speaking of the vacuuming, I didn't see the dirt detection feature in action and the overall vacuum performance was really poor with it rolling over even simple dried leaves and not picking them up. It also got stuck on almost every outing and it can be quite forceful when it's bumping its way around the house. With the mopping, I didn't really notice anything extra from the addition of cleaner or that dirt detection feature setting this bot apart. Selling for about $1,498 US dollars, this bot is extremely overpriced in my opinion for what it can and really can't do. I'm so disappointed in this robot. I really wanted to love it, but this iteration at least isn't up to scratch. In my opinion, you'd be better off considering some of iRobot spots like the J7 Plus, and you can watch that review here on the channel, or check out Roborock's S7 Max V Ultra, another worthy alternative. Check out those videos right now.